Hello everybody, this is Karma Killed the Cat, and welcome to your 12th Lua tutorial. In this tutorial, we'll be going over loading external Lua files and running them. So, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to... You have to make a new file, just call it file.lua or something, doesn't matter. And we're going to put some data in the file. Uh, actually, we're going to put a function, so we'll have function x and end and we're just going to use our classic example of printing hello so oh by the way you have to save file.lua in the same folder that you have your original lua file so for example i have this lua tutorial one file in the same folder that i have file.lua in so make sure you do that or you won't be able to do this so now that we have file.lua and it has a function in it, we're going to execute that function. So we're not execute that function, we're going to load that function into this Lua file, which is a completely separate file. So the simplest way to do this, sorry my dog's barking, is to just simply write do file, and in parentheses we have our file name, so we'll type in file.lua. So then, I believe we named the function x, we did, not sure why that's highlighted. So then we'll just call the x function. And we'll save this, and we'll save this, my dog is still barking. And now, one second, I'm going to stop my dog. And now if we save this, and we save file just to make sure. So if we save this, and then we run it open we get hello so what we've done is we've loaded a function in from one file into another then executed that function so that's the simplest of the three ways to load information from files and the second one is slightly more complicated but it's really not too bad the second one is called the load file function so let's change the code to make it work with this function and then we can run it and I'll explain what it does so just delete the function around the print hello line and then change do file to load file and we're gonna have to set a variable to this so we'll say x equals load file and then again we'll just call x so make sure to save both of the files you can't just save this one you have to save both or else it won't work so now let's open this and we get hello just like before so what the load file function does is it takes all the code in this file and then it puts it into a function and then it returns that function so in our code that function gets set to x and then we call x and it prints hello so the final function in this kind of family of functions is the load function so load is very similar to load file but instead of executing a file which in this case would be file.lua it executes a string so whatever is in the string given as a parameter will be executed so we can say print hello uh oh oh I see we need to use these uh, you can use apostrophes instead of quotation marks if you need to embed uh, quotes so we're still print we're still printing hello here. We just have to use apostrophes to avoid ending the string early. So if we save this and run it, we don't have to save both files because we're not doing anything with file.lua anymore. We uh oh. We got an error. One sec. So it turns out that the load function isn't compatible with uh, the version of Lua I'm using. I'm using Lua 5.1 and the latest version is 5.2 but as far as I know there's no way to get Lua 5.2 for Windows you can only get it on Mac and Linux I don't know why but I've searched around and I can't find any way to get Lua 5.2 so if you're already using Lua 5.2 just know that load executes a string instead of a file but if you downloaded uh, the Lua for Windows package, like I explained in the first Lua tutorial, you won't be able to use this function. But it really will not be of any use to you until we get to the 
IO library, which will be in a few tutorials, so I'll try to find a way to get Lua 5.2 for Windows. So that's all for this tutorial. Sorry I couldn't get the load function working. I'll try to figure that out soon. But in the next tutorial, we'll be going over modules, which is kind of like the namespaces of C Sharp and C++. So see you in the next tutorial.